So during this screencast, we're going to look at the role of hormones and the role of chromosomes in determining a person's sex and determining a person's gender. So before we start, I'm going to recap what's meant by the terms hormone and chromosome. Bottom right, you can see my subtitle. So I've said, what is a hormone? Now, hormones are chemical messengers. They're used in the body by the endocrine system. And as a reminder, the endocrine system is made up of hormones and it's also made up of glands. Um, hormones coordinate our organs um, and and they are produced by the glands. An example of a hormone in the body is testosterone, which we're going to look at quite closely today. Uh, remember that hormones move around the uh, body within the bloodstream. Um, they are quite long lasting, but they're quite slow to act. Uh, chromosomes on the other hand you can see top left picture um, every single cell in the body has 23 pairs of chromosomes. So chromosomes, I'm going to start with chromosomes rather than hormones and the reason being is that um, your chromosomes determine um, kind of first and foremost whether you will be male or female and this leads to um, the hormones being produced. So it really boils down to whether you have the XX chromosomes or the XY chromosomes. So there's 23 pairs of chromosomes in every single cell of the body and one pair is the sex chromosome. So XX uh, would relate to a woman's pairing and XY would relate to a man's pairing and obviously if you have XY uh, XY or XX that would de determine whether your internal genitalia and your external genitalia kind of what they would look like and what they would be so with XX that's uh, for females so their internal genitalia would be ovaries and XY would be males so their internal genitalia would be um, testes now the Y chromosome contains very little genetic material um, but it does determine the sex of the child or determine the sex of the person and a three month old fetus um, this is really where it starts to become either male or female now for the first few weeks the external genitalia of a male fetus and a female fetus are essentially the same so um, that would look more like a kind of female um, a female external genitalia and then it's this three month stage which is really really important so if the fetus was, uh, had the XY pairing, um, then at this three month stage, the testes would produce a, a large surge of the hormone testosterone, and that would enable the external genitalia of a male to develop. Um, and this helps to explain uh, a person's sense of whether they are female or whether they are male. Now moving on to testosterone, so what do we mean by testosterone? Well it's a steroid hormone and it's found predominantly in males, however there is a small amount that's produced in females. Uh, influence of testosterone on sexual differentiation of a fetus before birth is really really important. So as I said, if um, the fetus is due to be a male, um, at around that three, mo uh, three month stage um, during the pregnancy there would be a surge of testosterone and that would lead the fetus towards developing those external genitalia of a male. Um, so it's really important even before birth. Now it's interesting to note that the gonads are originally the same in all fetuses. So whether you are now a male or whether you are a female, your gonads will have started in exactly the same way. And by gonads, what I mean is the testes or the ovaries. So week eight of gestation is vital. By gestation, I mean essentially pregnancy. Um, so at week eight, um, something very, very important happens. Um, if you are due to be a male, so you have the XY sex uh, chromosome pairing, then the genetic information on the Y chromosome would cause the gonads to become testes. And at this week eight stage, um, they start to produce the hormone testosterone. Um, remember, as I said, around the 12 week stage, that's when there's a surge of testosterone. So week eight is vital because that's when the, the, the body starts to produce testosterone. Now, you're probably wondering what happens to the female uh, embryos in this um, situation. So they don't develop testes and so their gonads become ovaries and their hormones have very little influence kind of prenatally. So uh, estrogen has very little impact on that fetus and its development. It's more the testosterone that has the influence on males. To put it in a very simplistic way, you could think that um, you know all, all fetuses start neutral and then the testosterone causes the change towards being uh, a male fetus. 
So effects of testosterone, um, you've got in a kind of diagram here, if you want to have a read over them, uh, I would probably pause the screencast. The ones that I'm asking you to focus on and the main ones that we're going to focus on within the lesson are the masculinization of the brain, spatial skills, competitiveness, and aggression. So they are mainly male traits. Now, estrogen, as we know, is the female um, hormone, and it's actually a group of steroid hormones. So you can see kind of bottom right there, you've got three different types of hormones, all steroid hormones, and estrogen is the kind of umbrella term for those. Found predominantly in females, and it promotes the development and maintenance of female characteristics. Later in life, this will regulate menstruation. So um, at different times of their cycle, women will have more or less levels of estrogen. And it will also affect them psychologically and behaviorally. So things like PMT, premenstrual tension, and um, before um, kind of during that menstruation stage, uh, cooperation and sensitivity as well. So um, females are seen as more cooperative, more sensitive to others' needs than males are. And this is mainly due to estrogen. And finally, um, estrogen promotes neural connections. So the feminization of the brain, so equal use of both hemispheres. So I said on the last side, masculinization, um, that meant one side was more dominant. Equal use of both uh, hemispheres is seen as more feminine. So this is moving us on to a couple of different syndromes, um, Kleinfelter syndrome and Turner syndrome. Now, uh, we will have a closer look at these within the lesson, but it's really important you have a few key characteristics before um, you come into the lesson. Um, we'll start off with Kleinfelter syndrome, so on the right hand side, so affects one in every 750 males. And the reason that uh, those males will develop Kleinfelter syndrome is because of that XXY pairing. So you can see on the diagram there, they've got a, a, a kind of brighter red X. Uh, essentially, they have an extra X chromosome. And this leads those males towards having uh, poor muscle tone. Uh, they have enlarged breasts, they are infertile, and they have reduced facial hair. Um, looking at Turner's syndrome, so this is one in every 2,000 females, and again, it only affects females, um, and this is uh, essentially they have a missing X chromosome. So Kleinfelter's is they have an extra X chromosome, and Turner's is they have a missing X chromosome. Kleinfelter's affecting males, Turner's affecting females. Now, it's described as XO because O is the missing chromosome. So... Um, symptoms of Turner syndrome so it, this lends itself to uh, quite short females uh, underdeveloped ovaries so again they can be infertile and it's often diagnosed later usually around 8 to 14 years reason being is um, it's not as obvious if someone has Turner syndrome they might be a little bit short and um, but that's quite normal for you know a uh, a, a small portion of society uh, and it, this is often diagnosed when they uh, are due to have their periods and they don't happen because of those undeveloped ovaries so testing yourself without looking at this video or your pre-reading please make sure that you can before the lesson number one explain how chromosomes affect the development of sex number two describe how testosterone and estrogen lead to sex differentiation and number three, give features of a person with Kleinfelter syndrome and Turner syndrome.